Hey guys, today we're installing and reviewing this smart turn system on the FZ09. So what this is, is a smart turn system. It's a self-canceling turn system, but it's not just like a Harley Davidson where it will sense your lean or just a timer unit. It actually has some brains built into it. This is the entire control box. Inside the box, you get these little connectors that we're gonna be using to actually splice in and some handy dandy universal instructions that will be matching up to different colored wires. But this is all we're really installing is this control box and we're splicing into a bunch of different wires. This has accelerometers in it and a timer unit. So basically it's gonna know if you're changing lanes, if you're actually making a turn, if you're standing still, if you're going around a roundabout, for those of you in various parts of the world that use them, we have a couple here, but it's not too common and it will self cancel your turn signals. So the first thing we're gonna do is get to the actual wiring. Installation should be pretty simple. It's just two parts, making a quick temporary modification to the actual switch unit, which is just placing in a couple pieces of foam to disable the auto return mechanism of the physical switch, and then actually splicing and tying into the wires, which should be all under one of the fake air scoops here on the side of the bike. So we have two push pins behind here and one Allen bolt to take out. Then you just gently pry it out from the rear. There's a rubber grommet and pin right in the middle and slide it forward. Now on a stock bike, you're gonna see three connectors. This one was originally where the actual lights plugged in and I've direct wired mine when I swapped mine out to LED units. So we'll ignore this. These are the two we're interested in. This side, the bottom side, and you can follow the wire, goes up to the switch assembly. This side, the facing up, that is going to the bike. So we're gonna disconnect these real quick. So the white one here, you just push down on this tab gently wiggle it out of place and this bigger one here you just press on the entire big square part it's a little bit stiffer than the white one and that pops out so metering out the wires here on the more yellow connector the one that's a little more square we've got two rows of wires four and three the ones that we're interested in Looking at the row of three, you've got a light brown and white stripe one. That one is referred to as the signal wire. That's where the power is coming through. And then the two wires that are actuating left and right are on the end. So one of the rows of three and one of the rows of four, the dark green and the dark brown. Dark brown is our left and the dark green is our right. Now we need to cut each one of those and give yourself a good inch back from the connector because we need to strip the wires back on both sides of our cut. So I'm gonna go a good fat thumb width. It's about an inch on my hand. And we're gonna snip the right and the left, the dark green and the dark brown and the signal, the brown and the, the light brown and the white stripe. And then strip each of those back about a quarter inch each on each end. Now we have to install the bullet connectors. They give you female and male sides. Now the instructions say to put the female side going to the switch. However, in their generic install video, which they also have linked in the instructions, they show it the opposite. And they're putting the female on the connector side going to the bike. I'm gonna follow the way they show in their video and put the female side towards the connector and the male bullets on the switch side. Now we'll just test continuity again between the signal wire and my left and right. Left is good and right is good. All right. So now we need to tap into ground and accessory power and they give us these tap plugs. These will come down and pinch our two wires, and then they have a socket here so that the STS unit can plug in. So it doesn't actually need to cut the wires. 
we're just going to tap into them. Now I meter it out at the bike side here and I found a couple different 12 volt accessory wires. The black and white stripe is our ground. I'm going to use the pink and white which is right next to it as the positive accessory 12 volt. And I just realized why there's a discrepancy. It's actually not wrong in the instructions, it's just very unclear. When they say connector here, they're talking about the connector on the STS unit, not the bike wiring. So I'm glad I followed the video because it does correlate now if you match up what it says here with the STS unit. So now we're going to go ahead and temporarily connect part of the system in. I've got the ground and the power. And we're just going to connect on the STS unit itself the male bullets to the female connectors going to the bike side. That's going right into the connector unit itself. Yellow goes to dark green. Blue goes to the brown and white. And green goes to the remaining one. Now we're going to turn on the key and we should see the blinkers blink once or twice to indicate the system is calibrated and connected properly. Key on. Of course not. Okay, well still nothing. I've reconnected the stock wires. This SDS is just power. So I've got stock wiring back together just to verify that everything still works. I haven't blown a fuse or anything like that and everything works fine. All right, so that confirms all six of those bullet connectors are fine. I've verified that I have power, 12 volts, to the taps. That's fine. But yet, when I do the self-calibration, which is just plug this in and connect these three over to the bike side, absolutely nothing happens. Well, this is most frustrating. Okay, I've verified all connections are good. Stock to stock, still have signals. Verified power at the taps, installed, 13 volts with key on. We're good. As soon as I connect the STS, voltage drops to seven volts and it will not do its calibration procedure or do anything. So I shot them an email. While I'm waiting on that, I'm going to try another power source. I do have a dedicated 12 volt accessory power tap on this bike. I didn't want to use it because not everybody's going to have it. But this 2017 comes with an auxiliary port here specifically for the optional grip heaters. It's a separate fused accessory line and it is absolutely known good unlike these. So I'm going to try it and just see what happens. If it works, fine. That means for whatever reason, these wires just don't work with this system and you've got to use this or figure out some other line on your bike. So just for reference, the heated grip connector is right here. They've got the end is a dummy plug in it and it's taped to the main loom line running right here. So I'm just going to cut this tape. This gray plug is the end of it right here. All right, so here's the plug. There's a cable tie you have to cut to bring this whole loom down. There is zero slack on this cable. This is just a dummy plug. We can just get rid of this if you want to, or you can keep it on. It really doesn't make any difference. It's not doing anything. Actually, I'll probably keep it on so I can zip tie something to it here. But we need to peel back the insulation a bit. I'm just going to cut it back. And here we have a ground and positive, for sure, known good accessory wires. This is individually fused. There's nothing else going to it. So if plugging into this still drops voltage or doesn't work, then it's the unit, not the bike. And of course, before I actually do anything, I've got the key on, we'll verify voltage. 13.1. All right, good. And now we'll verify with the taps installed. Again, key on, 12.8. All right, just a little drop from going through the metal in there. Good enough. Let's plug in the unit. And with the unit installed, test the voltage again. And it's good. All right. So whatever accessory wire was in that original loom doesn't like being connected to the STS, but the dedicated one here 
with nothing else connected to it does. All right, let's see if the self-test works this time. All right, now we should see the lights flash once or twice, just turning on the key here as it goes through its self-test. You have got to be kidding me. Everything is connected. I verified the plug continuities. It works stock to stock. Voltage is good, 13 volts. I hear a switch. I hear a relay going in here. I hear tick, 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 but nothing's flashing. Okay, new theory. <laughs> I think either there's something wrong with the unit or it's not fully compatible with using the aftermarket relay unit and LED flashers that I have installed. Here's why. You got the unit itself. Obviously, I took it out of the case just so I could see if there was a reset button or anything like that so I could give that a shot. There isn't. There are a couple status lights, though. So powering it on, I can hear it click a couple times. It's going through its initialization. The power light stays on. The error light does not come on. I think it's fine. I've got everything connected as if it were normally installed 100%, pretending it went through its calibration flashes, went ahead and put it up together. Now, I don't have the switch modified, but all that does is affect the push to cancel. So you can manually activate it and manually deactivate it simply by pressing the same direction twice. So I can manually start the flash to the left, and if I want to manually cancel it, I just press it left again. And that works. Look, I'll turn it on. I have to keep it real steady because it only calibrates after it's steady. It went click, click, and now the power light is on. Now I can indicate left and left again to shut it off. So, I mean, it's functioning. I don't know if it's gonna actually function on the street. I, I would have to button it all up, modify the switch, and go for a test ride. So, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. <laughs> Just see what happens. If it works, it works, and I can tell the company, look, there may be an incompatibility between the certain type of aftermarket relay I have, which is to compensate for the LED resistance. I don't know, but I'll go through what I did here and we'll actually button it up and get this mounted because it does have to be mounted very specifically. And then we'll finish by modifying the switch and see what happens. So connecting the other three wires here, the ones that are actually going to the switch, the white one coming from the STS went to the dark green and the purple went to the dark brown and the brown on the STS went to the brown and white going to the switch. So now it's just a matter of getting this all back into position neatly and I got to put the case back on the STS and then we'll figure out where we can mount it. So I got this mounted and I think it's in a pretty darn good place. Now they give you this stipulation that the logo has to face up and the arrow has to be in the driving direction and it's pretty darn close. It's a few degrees off. It's not exactly pointing straight. I don't think that matters, but there's not too much room in this location. The cover doesn't have too much depth. There's a little pocket of space here. That's really about it. The bottom comes up right up to the underside of where I've got the bundles tied up here. And this is actually gonna have to squish in, oops, sorry about the camera, a little bit to fit in. So it's barely gonna fit in. Now, if you do have a spot where maybe it's gonna be more convenient for you to mount this facing the other way, because this is a very thick wiring loom, it's really tough to bend this wire to get it to fit. I've got it looped through the frame here a little bit but it was kind of tough even doing that. But say you wanted to mount it back farther on the bike, under the seat, somewhere under the tank, something like that. You could just take off 
all eight of the screws here, slide the board out, flip it around. There's nothing special about the construction of this. It's just a solid state board and an aluminum case. And I have to say, I do not like this being aluminum. It really limits where you can safely put it on your bike. I can't put it anywhere in here and just zip tie it because I already put a nice little scratch right there in my freaking frame where I just accidentally touched it while I was figuring out if I had space around it. You know, it's, it's solid aluminum. So bear that in mind. If it was plastic, that would be so much better and safer for mounting to your bike. But uh, it's aluminum, so just be aware. Learn from my little mistake there. Anyway, that's done. Now we're going to go up and modify the switch, which is just putting in a couple foam blocks. So we've got two screws to remove, one here and one right here, and this will allow us to split this switch assembly. We're just going to peel it apart just so we can get to the physical toggle switch. Now a big tip with these, these are technically called JIS, Japanese Industrial Standard, I believe it stands for. They're really, 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 really close to Phillips. It's important that whenever you work on these screws or Phillips, the fit is precise. I have never touched these screws and this top one is already from the factory slightly stripped out. They over torqued it a little bit. So use a bit that fits absolutely precisely. I've got this set here. You can get whatever brand you like and they look really similar on camera, I'm sure, but they are all very, very slightly different. And believe me, one of them is going to fit the best. Happens to be labeled PH2 on this one. I'm sure that's not anything standard, but that bit fits 100% securely. So that's what I'm gonna use for these to prevent any more damage. Now we can gently pull it off here. And what we're gonna be working with is right in here. So what we're doing is filling the gap. See the white in the middle that moves side to side when you actually flick the switch? We need to stop that from moving. <laughs> so we're going to use the little foam blocks, whichever ones are going to fit the best, and slide them right in the gaps. Now you may have a perfect fit with one or the other. They give you two sizes here. There's a thinner one and a thicker one. Or you may need to trim it down, or you may need to make your own. It's going to depend on exactly how much space you have to fill. So by the looks here, I might have to trim the large block because I think the small one is going to have a little bit of a gap. But I'll, I'll throw two of these small ones in and we'll see how it feels. What we're looking for is it to move freely, not stick, but not stay. It's going to be a fine line. So let's test the small ones and see if they work right out of the box. All right, one slid in there. So there is definitely a gap. It looks like about one and a quarter size block would actually fill it up. We'll see how it feels. I think I'm gonna need the thicker one because it still stays to the side. I have a feeling this is gonna be far too big. So I might have to break out the scissors. Yeah, that won't even center right. All right, time to cut it down. So just eyeballing this here, I want to cut this down by a third. There we are. See how that fits. There we go. Both sides actuate perfectly, and the center does not lock. That's exactly what you want. All right. Button this back up, get on the road and test it. Okay, close, but not quite a cigar yet. I've got just a sliver too much foam in here. If I actuate the switch normally, it's not tripping. I have to actually really push it in order for it to trip. And I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to have to do that. I want to just hit it normally. So I'm going to open this up real quick. Just take out a sliver of foam until this starts working completely normally. Woo! All right, through a lot of trial and error, just working out the perfect little wedge sizes. I've got it working with normal effort and everything's good. Now we can get on the road. Woo! 
That was a pain in the butt. So if everything works, my only working theory is the output signal voltage from the STS to the aftermarket relay is lower than the relay is expecting. So the first thing I'm going to do out here is quietly start the bike because it is very late, one thirty in the morning. It's not exactly a quiet bike. First thing I'm going to do is test the automatic shutoff. We know the manual cancellation works. So the automatic shutoff is 15 seconds of moving. If you don't do a maneuver, it will shut them off. So I'm going to go down here to nice long street without any traffic and see if they shut off after 15 seconds. All right, so I'm going to turn on the signals. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Somewhere around here. Should shut off, hopefully. And it's not. Hmm. Oh, it did. It was more like twenty. That was definitely longer than 15 seconds, but okay, that works. Cool. So now let's try turning a corner. I'm not going to turn them off. Nice easy turn. Oh, that is awesome. <laughs> that worked. All right, let's try a gentler sweeping corner. See what the threshold is. Oh, that is badass. All right, cool. Uh, let's try a lane change here. So let me get past this truck and we'll just pretend we're on a freeway or something. Do, 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 do. And I want to change lanes, excuse me. Thank you. Oh, that is phenomenal. <laughs> that is really cool. Okay, so. Obviously, it's going to work with a roundabout because that's just like that long sweeping corner. That is really good. Wow. I'm impressed. I have to say it was a complete pain in the ass installing. It would be much, much, much better if they had individual kits for the different bikes. They would sell so many more of them. But the switch is functioning completely normally. I'm not even thinking about it. Feels totally normal. Awkward turns work. <laughs> I didn't touch it. That's great. Well, that completely solves my problem of motor vlogging to you guys and leaving my signal on. Yep, now I have to say it didn't come on that time. I hit the switch. Maybe I just wasn't quite firm enough. I'm hitting it right, and it's not coming on. Yeah, I think the foam isn't quite right. I had to cancel it manually. I flicked the switch, and it was actually stuck to the right. So I had to... Yep, that was the problem. It was actually physically tripped, so it thought it was sticking to the right. Maybe I accidentally pressed it a little too firm. But I tell you, that foam with this particular switch because this physical switch locks very quickly. I know some other switches only lock at their extremes so it's got a lot of slop. This one has no slop and unfortunately there's just such a small window to get that foam exactly right. It's definitely uh, turning right where it feels a little different. It's not the unit. I mean, the unit is functioning perfectly. It's just the fit of that foam just on that one side. I'll just have to be a little conscious to not really crank on it and get it to lock. Just a nice light touch is all it needs. 
Now I'll say I did a light touch there and it still didn't go. Is it still locked? Let me press the center. No. Well, it's going to take a little getting used to because there is a window there of pressing too lightly and too hard. So that is definitely a difference, at least with this particular bike. Whereas with the stock one, there was absolutely no doubt. You press the switch and it locked at the end and that was that. You do have to hit this one very specifically. You can't crank on it and you can't be too light. But other than that, very impressive indeed. I really like the lane change maneuver. I'm going to do it again. Wow. <laughs> I am uh, I'm, I'm skeptical. I was actually looking for it to fail there because, I mean, that really wasn't much. I know it, it looks like even less on camera, but that just wasn't much. I didn't press it there. Don't worry. It didn't screw up. I just forgot to hit it. Wow. Do it again. Wow. That is really nice. Well, I have to say, I will recommend this product. It's not going to be for everyone to install. But I see absolutely no downsides to having it on your bike. It's not that expensive. I looked at their site. They wanted a hundred bucks for it, ninety-nine bucks. Whoop-de-do! That's really not that much. Now, as long as you have somebody to install it, or you're handy, especially at troubleshooting, do it. You guys know I don't BS. And this was free. I'm not getting anything out of it. It's not an affiliate or anything like that. I'm just legitimately telling you, I like this. This is really nice. It functions exactly like an intuitive cancel device would. All right, well, I got a lot of editing to do. The install had a lot of gotcha moments, but I'm happy it's on. So I hope this helps somebody, especially if you're installing it on an FZ09. But even if you're installing it on some other bike, know that it works. It's not BS. Well, that's it, guys. Got lots more stuff coming up. Got a busy day tomorrow. New reviews. I have another product from them to install here. That one I'm actually looking forward to even more. The automatic velocity rear brake modulator, which I already have one on the FJR. I love it. This one integrates with the stock turn signal. See you next time.